Greetings and welcome back. We are almost ready to start taking a look at each and every one of the individual layer style effects that are available inside of Photoshop CS5. However, before we do, there's one more window I want to point out because you're going to see it repeated several different times throughout our layer styles, and that is the contour settings. So to show this off, I'm going to grab our very first layer style once again, and that is Drop Shadow. Now, to do a really quick adjustment of settings for Drop Shadow, I'm just going to select it. You'll notice it's already visible. If you look really close, there's a little tiny Drop Shadow that has appeared under my document. I'm just going to drag this out. As long as we have our Drop Shadow options open, I can place the shadow anywhere I want by dragging right inside the document, which is a very neat trick. Now. I'm not talking in this, uh, in this video, we're not discussing the actual structure settings for the drop shadow itself. I just want to talk about these contour settings that you see here. The reason I'm pointing these out specifically is because they have a lot more to do with layer styles than just drop shadows. For instance, if we take a look at inner shadow, inner shadow settings has contour, outer glow has contour, inner glow has contour, bevel and emboss has contour, it even has its own special contour setting. Satin has contour, and then, let's see, I think that's about it. So you have all these different layer styles that each have contour, and they all are going to open up essentially the same window, or the same type of window, so it's important for you to know how this window works. So let's go ahead and take our shadow, and I'm going to increase its size setting. Not too high, I still want to be able to see full darkness of the shadow somewhere on the inside, and then full transparency on the outside, just to help illustrate my point, I am going to take the opacity setting of the drop shadow and crank it up to 100%. That'll give us true black at the center of the shadow. Okay, with that done, let's click on our contour. Now, what this does is it allows you to map out the change from transparency to opacity from left to right. So, on the left-hand side of our graph, we have transparency, on the right side of the graph we have opacity, and this is the relationship taking place from one side of that spectrum to the other. This means that my completely transparent pixels that sit just outside the shadow to the completely opaque pixels on the inside of the shadow, there's a linear relationship taking place between those. I don't have to leave it at a linear relationship. I can click right here inside this graph and give this an ease out relationship as you see here and what that's saying is that from transparency we are going to quickly increase the overall opacity and then that increase will slow down as we make it to full opacity and the result of that is to take those inner dark pixels and seem to push them out so we have a thinner band of transition at the outer edge of our shadow if we pull in the opposite direction this is an ease out relationship, or that's what, that's what it's called. And what that means is we're starting off with our completely transparent pixels and then slowly transitioning toward full darkness and then quickly accelerating as we get inside. And the result is to take those transparent pixels and start to push those in a little bit. But it's still decreasing that band of transition. We can do more outlandish things as well. We can do ease in and ease out together if we want. And really all that's doing is leaving the shadow pretty close to where it was located, but we're tightening up, again, that band, that area of transition, because we're, we're doing a slow change, and then a really fast change, and that change slows down once more. And if you want to do even more outlandish and crazy things, you can do like a zigzag line. And so we get these concentric rings of shadow. Now how is this working? Well, we're starting at full transparency quickly going to a little bit of opacity, and then back down to more transparency. And you can see that reflected at the outermost ring. Completely transparent, a little, a little opacity, and then back toward transparent. Then back to more opacity, then back to transparent, and over and over again until we finally make it inside. Now we have more control than just that. We don't have to just click and drag on a point. You can select a point and then adjust its position numerically. Input is going to allow you to control the horizontal position of that point, and output will allow you to control the vertical. So you can just set those to anything you like. You can also take your points and turn them into corners. So if I take several points and click on those, we can switch on corner, and now we're getting these really sharp lines inside our shadow. So if I set all these to corner, just for the fun of it, we get this really harsh zigzag line. And so we're getting these really, really distinct points of shadow. 
where we're going from light to dark to light to dark over and over and over again. Now you don't even have to play with these uh, individually on your own. You can load up a series of presets. And so we have things like linear, cone, inverted, etc. and so forth. So there's sawtooth, which is pretty close to what we had a second ago. But notice how that last point is going back down to complete transparency. So we're never actually making it to a fully opaque shadow. We're instead going all the way back down. So you can have a lot of fun with that. You can also save or load existing curves that you like and create a new preset by clicking on the new button. So that's a quick look at the contour editor. Now, generally speaking, all of these contour windows are going to work exactly the same way. And, oh, I do want to mention this. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to jump away too quickly. We do have anti-aliased. So if I set my preset back over to Sawtooth 1, which is a nice sharp result, we can anti-alias that. The change is very subtle, but it just means that any rapid transitions are getting anti-aliased, which will cause a little bit of additional smoothing. In any case, as I was saying a second ago, these contour windows all work exactly the same way, but you may be affecting different things. Here we're affecting kind of the shape of transition for our shadow, where if we go to bevel and emboss, what we're actually controlling is the contour of the edge, uh, which will be a lot more apparent. So I've just jumped down to bevel and emboss, which has turned on the default settings for it. Uh, let me take my size of the bevel and we'll increase it. I'll also take my technique and switch this to chisel hard. So we can see the result there. And well, actually, let me see. Let me switch that to, well, chisel hard or chisel soft are going to do about the same thing in this particular case, and that's okay. If I take my gloss contour, though, I can control the shape of that gloss. So this is from zero gloss all the way up to full gloss. And again, I'm just controlling the shape of that relationship. So it's all about mapping. It's all about controlling how, how you're going to go from having nothing to having completely opaque of whatever it is you're adjusting. So again, all I wanted to do here, not, uh, not really talk about individual layer styles. I just wanted to talk about that contour window so you can see how that works. And so now you'll be familiar with what you're going to find in each one of those little contour areas. Just remember, you may be affecting different things from one layer style to the next. It's all about just controlling the shape of some sort of relationship. So that will wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.